There seem to be a growing number of threads on the RME forums with users who are having difficulty setting up total mix effects for their live audio applications, like Zoom or Discord. I've been using mine for quite some time. I feel like I have a great setup, so I'd like to share it with you. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and take a look at my audio interface and look at how it's set up. So mine's pretty simple. I have a Babyface Pro FS, but this particular tutorial will work with any RME audio interface as long as you're using Total Mix. Um, I have USB plugged in for bus for uh, data transfer and the, the power. I have my mic plugged into Instrument 4, and I have my monitor, which is a headphone amplifier plugged into the optical output. When working with Total Mix, it's important that we know what each row of channels corresponds to. So, let's start with the top. Hardware inputs directly correlates to the inputs of your audio interface. So in my case, I have a Babyface Pro, and I have Mic 1, which refers to Analog 1. I have Mic 2, which corresponds with Analog 2. I have Instrument 3 and Instrument 4, which corresponds to Instrument 3, 4, and so on. You can also see that these directly correlate with the Windows sound settings. So if we go to the sound settings in Windows, and we click on Sound Control Panel, and we click on the Recording tab, we can see that each one of these hardware inputs is available in the Recording tab. Now, as I spoke about earlier, my mic is connected to Instrument 4, and Total Mix is reflecting that, because as I speak into my mic, you can see that Instrument 4 is lighting up. Similarly, under the Recording tab in Windows, we can scroll down and see that Analog 3 and 4 is lighting up, because I am speaking into that instrument right now. Moving on. Software playback. Software playback refers to sounds and audio played by your computer. It has nothing to do with your audio interface. In order to receive sound on these channels, we need to go to the playback tab in Windows and then select one of our audio sources. So in this case, Speakers, RME Babyface Pro, is connected to Analog 1-2. Analog 3-4 is connected to Phones 3-4. ADAT 1-2-3-4-5-6-7-8 are all listed here as well. Each one of these channels is stereo. So I've already set my default device to Speakers on my RME Babyface Pro. So if I go ahead and double click on this sound file, it will begin to play. And as you'll see here, I'm getting levels for that sound software playback channel. Similarly, if I switch the default audio device to ADAT 5.6 and begin playing sound, now you can see I'm getting levels on ADAT 5.6 instead of analog 1.2. Finally, we have hardware outputs. Hardware outputs, like hardware inputs, directly refer to the hardware outputs on your audio interface. So in my case, I have analog 1.2, phone 3.4, ADAT 3.4, 5.6, 7.8. So if I'm playing back audio on analog 1-2 through my Windows playback, I can send that signal to several different outputs by clicking on the output that I want to send it to and rolling the channel up. So again, 8 at 7 8, I clicked on the channel I want, and I can roll the audio up, and it will come out on the other end. So if I plug something into my 8 at 7 8, or my 8 at 5 6 port on my Babyface Pro, I would be able to monitor that sound. Now that we know how channels work in Total Mix, we need to set up our monitor. To do that, we're going to go to our main channel in the lower right hand corner and click Assign and go to Main Out. Now, on my particular audio interface, I'm using the optical out, which is AS12, but you would need to select your monitor in this list. I'm going to select AS12, and if you'll notice, AS12 left the hardware outputs and has been replaced by Phones 3.4, which was originally selected as the main output. Now that I've selected my main, I can click on main, I can roll up the audio source, and now I can hear my mic in my monitor. But unfortunately, I can only hear it in the right channel at this time. That's okay. We just need to split up instrument 3 and 4 because they're currently a stereo channel. To do that, we're going to click on the wrench, we're going to click on stereo, and now we have two separate channels. 
Now, I'm not using instrument three, so we're gonna roll that down to zero. Now, I am using instrument four, but unfortunately, it's still only coming through my right channel. We can solve that by using the balance fader to set it to zero. When I double click the balance fader, it goes to zero. And now the levels are the same in both my left and right channel and my monitor. Now that I can monitor my microphone in real time, it would be nice if I could hear my Windows audio through my monitor as well. Earlier, we set my playback to speakers for RME Babyface Pro, which we know is Analog 1.2. If I go ahead and open up this sound file, you can see that I'm getting levels here on software playback, but I'm not actually hearing it on main. What I can do is slowly roll up the software playback slider. And now, as you can see, this audio is being played back through my monitor. You can't hear it because it's only being played through my monitor, not through my microphone. Now that we can monitor our microphone in real time and hear Windows audio through our monitor, it's time to take the final step and set up our microphone. Now, as you can see, under Windows Sound Recording Devices, we're currently already receiving signal under Analog 3.4. So why wouldn't we just use this? Let me demonstrate. If I open up an audio application and create a two-channel document and begin recording, you're going to see that audio is only going to come out of the right channel. This is a problem. Many of the live audio applications that we use have two-channel input. So this means the users on the other end will only hear audio out of one of two channels. We do not want that. So how do we solve this problem? Well, the first step is to select one of our hardware outputs to use as our recording device. So for this example, I'm just going to use analog one, two. Now, in order to send my mic to analog one, two, I need to click on the hardware output analog one, two, and then I need to drag the fader up to zero. And as you can see, I'm starting to get sound in this hardware output. Now, I'm only getting it in the right channel, so make sure that we double click the balance fader to send it to both channels. And as you'll see, we're getting audio in both channels now. The next step is to make sure that our software playbacks are all on negative infinity for our analog one too. If we leave any of the software playback sliders up, any audio that we play through these sources will then be output through our hardware output, analog one, two. So with these all on negative infinity, any audio that we play will not be played back through our audio source, for example. So now that we have set our software playbacks to negative infinity, and we have set up our instrument for, for our analog one, two, we want to go ahead and look at our Windows sound recording. And you'll notice here that analog one, two is not showing any levels. That's because we need to set up our hardware output to take over analog one, two's recording. The way to do that is to click on this wrench and click on loopback. And now when I speak, you can see that analog one, two has taken over this particular Windows recording device. And if I go ahead and set that as my default device and I open up Goldwave, I can go ahead and create a new stereo document. And when I record, you'll see that the recording is coming through on both the left and the right channel, which is exactly what we want. Now that you're using a hardware output, you open up a lot of mixing options for yourself. The first and most obvious is if you have a, an external audio device like a guitar or a keyboard. You can click on phones three and four and then roll up the source for that audio device. So let's say we had a guitar plugged into instrument three. We could simply click on phones three, four, roll up the fader, set the balance fader to zero. And now anything we play through that guitar would be recorded through our hardware output phone three, four. Additionally, if you have any software input, like a music file, for example, we could click on phones three, four, and fade in that song and fade it out. This is extremely useful for sharing all sorts of audio sources from your computer and anything that you have that's external. That will about wrap it up for this video. I hope this has helped you set up Total Mix for your live audio applications. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and thanks for watching.